All right, guys, it's pretty clear to see that we're going the distance when it comes to demonology and the vast host of theological entities that encompass the world of occultism. We're at part four now. That's a whole counter worth of demons that you should probably just straight up avoid. Whatever your thoughts on the matter, when it all boils down, these things are just straight up interesting, steeped in mysterious magic and ancient writings from time-lost civilizations. So, I guess we better get started then, eh? Hello, horror fans, and once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos, your heartfelt home for all things horrifying. As always, I'll be your humble host, Jack Finch, as we peer back into the abyss and take a look at the top five scary demons you should never summon, part four. Roll the clip. That clip, for those of you that are curious, was from 2005's Constantine, starring my guy Keanu Reeves. Pretty decent film, but even better graphic novel, so if you enjoy demonology, you'll enjoy John Constantine Howlblazer even more. Before we kick off this list, guys, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, and if you stick around all the way to the end, I'll be reading out some of your most creative comments from the past few days. Kicking off at number five, Abraxas, who is perhaps one of the most mysterious entities in the whole of the demonic glaciers. Throughout ancient history, Abraxas Abraxas is referred to many times as an archon, an eon, a demon, and even a god. In the ancient theology of Gnosticism, Abraxas is continually referred to in the holy book of the great invisible spirit as an aeon, a species of cosmic intrigue that inadvertently created the Demiurge, a mysterious malevolent force of unknown intent. Abraxas really has been around for as long as anyone can recall, and his mystic uncertainty is what guides his rank in the demonic hierarchy. In Jacques Colin de Plance's Infernal Dictionary, Abraxas is labelled as the supreme god of the Basilidians, a Gnostic sect that were wiped out sometime in the 4th century, and whose motivation in history is unclear. There are a series of mysterious relics left behind though, a vast number of engraved stones dubbed the Abraxas stones, of which purpose no one really knows. Spooky. Coming in at number four, Mammon. Mammon, who takes up a role as one of the seven princes of hell, who in more interpretable terms makes up the seven deadly sins, is the demonic manifestation of greed. Mammon is widely considered to be a demon of Syrian origin. As Peter Lombard, the Bishop of Paris stated, riches are called by the name of a devil, namely Mammon, for Mammon is the name of a devil by which riches are called according to the Syrian tongue. Bit of a mouthful. Throughout many ancient texts, the word Mammon crops up to describe an entity of greed and avarice. In John Milton's Paradise Lost, Mammon is referenced as a fallen angel who values earthly treasures over all other things. Later in contemporary occultism, Colin de Plancy describes Mammon in the Dictionnaire Infernal as Hell's ambassador to England, which I'm not entirely sure if I'm insulted or not. Either way, Mammon has cemented himself a pretty cushy demonic existence by hoarding material wealth and corrupting others to do the same. Next up at number three, Agrat Bat Malat. Possibly the daughter or granddaughter of Lilith, who we've covered here before, Agrat Bat Malat is a prolific demon in Jewish mythology. In Zoharastic Kabbalah, she is a queen of demons and one of the four sacred angels of sacred prostitution, who mated with the archangel Samael, we'll get to him later, and later became the fourth succubi. Her fellow demons and sisters are Lilith, Namer, and Ashteth. In rabbinic literature, she is known as the dancing roof demon, haunting the air with her chariot and her train of 18 messengers of spiritual destruction, which is pretty heavy reading, I guess. Agrat Bat Malat also occurs in ancient texts as the mistress of the sorceresses, who communicated magical secrets to Amimar, a prominent sage of Babylon. She is also widely tied up in legends of King David, where she she bore him the son Asmodeus, king of the demons. Swinging in at number two, Samael, who is a very interesting and oftentimes perplexing figure in theology and demonology. Samael in Hebrew is described as the venom, the poison, and the blindness. He is an incredibly important figure in the Talmud, where he is seen as the accuser, the seducer, and the destroyer, and is often regarded as both good and evil. Oh, and on top of that, he's the archangel of death. 
pretty big boots to fill. It's in the Kabbalah where his roots in demonology begin though, where he is tied to the demon Lilith, the first of the succubi. With her, Samael created a host of demonic children, including a son, the Sword of Samael, who you may know as Asmodei. In Gnosticism, Samael appears as the blind god and comprises one third of the Demiurge. Often through Gnostic texts, he appears as a lion faced serpent and is perhaps one of the oldest malign references throughout ancient scripture. And finally, our number Number one spot, Leonard. And to be honest, I've been wanting to cover this guy for quite some time simply because of his name, Leonard. The antiquitous pronunciation, of course, would be Leonard, but come on. It's Leonard. Also known as Master Leonard, as laid out in the Dictionnaire Infernal, he's the Grand Master of Nocturnal Orgies and Demons. In folklore, he is represented as a three-horned goat with a darkened human face. He marks his initiates with one of his horns and is often considered the demonic representation of the goat. In demonology, infernal powers obtained from the worship of Master Leonard range from metamorphosis into monstrous animals or even causing men to fly as an incubus. It is often thought that Leonard is associated with the iconography of Baphomet or the Goat of Mendes, a figure worshipped allegedly by the Knights Templar. In scripture, he was worshipped at black banquets held in Leonard's honour, where dead baby goats were eaten without salt and boiled with reptiles to deliberately spoil the meat. I mean, that's just a waste, really. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Part four of the top five scary demons you should never summon. You've been warned. Before we depart, let's read out some of your greatest comments from the past few days. VRTX Production says, if you're going to do Lovecraftian games, I hope you all would include Darkest Dungeon. The narrator is phenomenal, but the game overall plays on many stories and themes. Well, my good buddy, Darkest Dungeon is legit my favorite roguelike game ever made, even more than XCOM, and that's saying something. If you're a fan of gaming and Lovecraft, I definitely recommend picking this one up. That's a great recommendation. Those blackened arcades of antiquity. In regard to Worst Horror Remakes Part 2, Grim Exploration says, The Thing should not be on this list. The Thing was a prequel, like you said. If you have a better name for it other than The Thing, let's hear it. Not The Thing? How's that? Although I agree perhaps that was unfair. Like I said, it was a personal grudge. Well, there we have it folks. Cheers for sticking out all the way to the end. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, ding that subscribe button, and show us some love in the comment box down below. As always, I've been your host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.